What's going on guys, this is Alec here and welcome to episode 16, look at the size of this episode, that's what she said, <laughs> look at the length of this episode, I believe it's around 17 minutes long, um, I don't expect everyone to stick along for it all, but if you do, we've got some good games coming up, uh, first game up against Watford in the FA Cup and then the second game against Liverpool uh, in the Premier League away at Anfield, so... As you can see, we had an email off the board saying we're not on track, so through this episode I'll be trying to make steps to improve that. We got Marvin Emnes back from being on loan, he actually plays in our first game here. West Brom put a bid in for Neil Taylor, I asked him for a little bit more, but as you can see here, that's going to be completely irrelevant. Uh, Andrew Robertson, well, never mind that, you're him at £16 million. Can we please just highlight that, £16 million. I, I don't know how, I don't know why, but you know, I kind of toyed with the idea, should I sign him, should I not? And I thought, we've just had 16 million for Amat, and we've got a chance to offload Neil Taylor here. We'll offer 6 million plus Neil Taylor, he's 22 rated, let's sign him up. And that's what we did, our first signing of our January transfer window. Uh, we've got uh, Andrew Robertson. This is our squad report, guys. If you want to see the stats on anyone, uh, just feel free to pause. I just go through this list Um one by one, I spent two seconds on each one, I counted it. Uh, if you want to see the stats of everyone, like I said, um, you know, click the button, press pause, whatever. But I'm going to be doing another one of these uh, squad report things again in a few episodes time, but with the, the games played and the goals and the assists, that type of thing as well. As you can see, Regan Poole and Oxford both gone up seven ratings, two really good signings, Kingsley's gone up four. We, we've got some great players, like we've even got Frank Tabanu, 78 rated out on loan, as well as the likes of Gomis. Um, but yeah, we, we're stacked, we're a stack club at the moment. I think we've actually reached the brim of, of players, but... Uh, you saw Amat go earlier, £16 million. Let me know if you want me to replace him. Now, I'm I'm kind of in the situation where I don't think he should be replaced. Uh, not a centre-back anyway, because we've got the likes of Alfie Mawson, Regan Poole and Van der Horn, all capable. And we've also got uh, Kyle Bartley coming back from loan at the end of the season. That's four centre-halves there that can replace Amat e easily enough. Uh, but... Anywhere else on the pitch, if you want me to invest that £16 million elsewhere, let me know. I still have been getting suggestions in. A lot of people said I should be making pre-season uh, contract signings, so I'll probably make steps to do that. But on to the first game of the episode, up against Watford at home, uh, the Emirates FA Cup. I love the graphics. Uh, I'll, I'll say that again. As you can see here again, we've played quite a young team. Uh, Andrew Robertson actually making his debut here. Martin Odegaard starting a little bit deeper than he did in the last game, but... I really enjoyed him last game. We've got the likes of Llorente, Montero and Dyer up front. That's a deadly trio. As you can see, Watford's team, we did actually play them uh, in last episode, I believe, in, in the cup. I think this is the replay. I'm pretty sure this is the replay. But they've got ex-Swans player Ukash Fabianski in goals. They've swapped around the back line a little bit, brought Prudel in. But uh, yeah, I was I was kind of confident this game. We played a much better team this game than we did in, in the last game, I believe, away at Vicarage Road, and we managed to get a draw there. So going into this game, I was fairly confident. And we've got Fulton coming forward with the ball here into Nathan Dyer. He put a really good ball in, and that was so close from Fernando Llorente to get in a diving header. That would have been a nice goal, uh, but unfortunately, he didn't connect. Still us, keeping up with the pressure. Robertson into Wayne Routledge, into Fernando Llorente. We'll pass it into Routledge, and it's a good save from Gus Fabian. Uh, I know his name's Lucas, but I've heard from the man himself, Fabianski, that you pronounce it Ukash. It's it's online somewhere. Uh, anyway, let's just call him Fabianski. But uh, Robertson makes a good tackle at left back here, strides on forward. He was actually really, really good this game. He'll play a long ball through to Nathan Dyer, who can get him behind the Watford defence, and he does so. He'll put a ball into the box. It's a poor clearance by Watford. You're ending with a shot. It rebounds to Rowledge, who scores. Makes it 1-0 on the 35th minute. Uh, I really like Wayne Routledge, to be honest. Especially playing in behind that striker. Uh, I think I went quite dead. I looked away from my mic. Um, he's not quick enough for me to play out on the wing. And I'm not one to usually go on about pace. But just in behind the striker, he's so good. Because he's so smooth and nippy on his feet. And he's got the four-star skills. He's fairly strong as well to hold players off. Uh, he does a perfect job for me in behind the striker. But... And piling on some pressure just before half time, Fernando Llorente into Wayne Routledge, who will get himself into a bit of space, and that's a lovely finish <laughs> into the top left hand corner. I did not expect that from Wayne Routledge. Uh, as you'll actually be able to see here. Now, see, I can't even see it from that replay. That goal was actually an own goal. 
by Jose Olabas. I mean, I can kind of see it, but I didn't really see any major deflection. As you see here, they'll, they'll credit it an on goal to Jose Olabas. But I'm going to give credit to Wayne Rutledge anyway. Like I said, in behind the striker, he's such a good player, making runs in behind Fernando Llorente. But that's going to be it for the first half, 2-0. Uh, like, I, like I said, I was, I was much more confident this game. Going away and drawing with the team we put out. Uh, and, and then obviously this time knowing that we'd play a much better team. But uh, a nice bit of play from us. We managed to build it up slowly out of the back. Well, actually quite quickly, to be fair. Uh, it comes to Montero, into Robertson, who's getting involved in the game. Llorente passes it back to Fulton. Over wide out to Angel Rangel, who looks inside the Erdegaard. Now we're taking this really slowly, and, and this is the key here. Look at Watford are backing off, so we're just using the players that are in space. But it comes into Fulton, into Llorente, into Wayne Routledge, who puts it through Dyer one on one with the keeper, and it's a really, really nice finish to match a really, really nice goal. It started right in our box. I think Van der Horn passed it uh, out, out of our box, and we managed to build it up. I'm not sure how many passes were there exactly, but Nathan Dyer goes through one on with the keeper, and it's a decent finish, just loops it over the legs of Lukas Fabianski. Uh, as you can see, Marvin Emnes there, he came on. We brought him on late on into the game. Uh, this is probably Watford's best chance, and it's a good save from Christopher Nordvelt. That was their best chance. That's the only highlight I've shown so far, because that's the only highlight they've had. But uh, Emnes did actually get busy and get involved in this game. I did try scoring with him. Um, as you can see here, he's getting involved. He plays a nice ball to, uh, I was going to say Viva Montero there. Uh, that's the song Swan sing. But uh, into Jefferson Montero who gets his goal. Kind of frozen out of the first team a little bit by Memphis. So it's nice to see him playing in the League Cup here. And uh, also nice to have Marvin Emnes back. Like I said, he was really, really busy this game. Uh, he was unlucky not to score. I didn't show any highlights of him shooting because he always quite, kind of got like one on one with the keeper, and the defender would make like a last ditch tackle, that kind of thing. But he gets himself an assist on his uh, his game back. We also brought McBurney on, uh, and I'm not sure who else came on in the end. But Watford, right at the last, what was that Van der Horn? Tell me because I I can't tell you what that was because I don't know. You'll see from the replay here, it, the Watford player just kind of controls it. I think it's Okaka. I, I'm. Van der Horn decides he's playing American NFL, but uh, Pereira had to step up with a penalty, and now this is Nordvel for his clean sheet. They won't do anything to the fixture, it's just a consolation goal. Pereira tucks it away. It's a nice pen. Uh, had Nordvel dived that way, he would have saved it, but regardless, I, I can't be too annoyed. Four goals past Watford. It is a little bit annoying not to keep the clean sheet, but uh, if a penalty is the only way they're going to score, then I guess that's okay. It was a sloppy one by Van der Horn, but I, like, I don't even know what I did to like do that I think I just press circle to try and clear the ball and he just decides to go right through the back of Okaka but that's how this one is going to end at the Liberty Stadium 4-1 to us against Watford like I said changing the team around this game putting in some first team players uh, I guess first team players you know like the likes of uh, Montero and Dyer and whatnot. it really strengthens the team but yeah 4-1 in our first game quite a solid performance against Watford like I said they didn't really have a lot of chances that header that Nordvelt saved very well was uh, was one and the penalty was another but as you can see here Michu actually rejected our first uh, offer we sent him it's because he wasn't happy he wanted to see the squad roll up a squad rotation player because that's all he would be I, I, I don't think he'd be the starting player uh, again but uh, as you can see here Jordi Amat confirmed he's gone 12.5 million has gone into our transfer budget 16 million we sold him for that's not a bad bit of business in my opinion I know we would have grown him to be a good player but uh, here's another good bit of business Ollie McBurney, I know he's played a couple of games for us, but we've actually managed to get him out on loan to Exeter, where he'll get a bit of experience. Now then, trying to complete some board objectives, they wanted me to bring one player through the Youth Academy, and he needs to feature in at least 10 games so far this season. So, this is the player we went for, Aidan Shaw, he's 17 years old, I think he was 17, he's either 17 or 16, and he's uh, 63 rated, which isn't too bad, he's probably got a potential of about 90, so we'll try and get him is 10 games this season and then he'll probably be up for loan next season he's actually 16 so that, that's that's decent um but yeah on to the big game of the episode liverpool take on swansea at anfield now this is never going to be an easy game liverpool are third in the league they're 10 points behind us um it's not really that close up there at the moment but if manchester united beat me or liverpool beat me it can get a lot closer so I'm always on edge, I've always got to be on my top performance. But this is the Liverpool team. Pierre, Amerik, Aubameyang and Daniel Sturridge up there as long as well as uh, Giorgino, Roberto Firmino. That's a strong bench as well, like Savamari Chan, Danny Ings to, that are able to come on. 
This is our team that we went for. It's pretty much the standard team we play every single game. Uh, Leon Britton in there. Uh, yeah, like I said, no changes. We didn't start Robin, Robertson, Andrew Robertson in this game because he's uh, he, he recently played in the cup game. So um, we're going to try and ease him into the first team like I try and do with a lot of my players. But uh, yeah, I knew what I was going to expect this game. A lot of high pressing and a very tough game. But we have a chance here early on in the game. Here's Kingsley. He gets it into Gilfi Sigurdsson and he creates a bit of space for himself. A shot never really testing uh, Karius, but uh, worth, worth a shot. Aubameyang wins the header onto Philip Coutinho, who easily gets past Reese Oxford. And there's still Coutinho down that left-hand side. He'll put a good ball into Daniel Sturridge. It's a good touch and Liverpool are 1-0 up already. <sighs> I knew this was going to be a hard game. We're 14 minutes into the game, we're 1-0 down. I really wanted to win this one. Coutinho, look at that touch, and it's right for finish. It's, it's a good goal. It's a good goal from Liverpool. As you can see, Jurgen Klopp also thinks it's a good goal. Uh, I had to show that little bit of him in there. But uh, yeah, Daniel Sturridge, that's only his th uh, second goal in the Premier League season. Much like last episode, I was shocked Lukaku only scoring three so far for uh, Arsenal. That's only Sturridge's second goal, but uh, Liverpool still pr press on. Here's Aubameyang, turns Curtis Davis with ease and a left foot shot just wide of the post. It did look like Vorm had that one covered, but a scary one nonetheless. But uh, used to pie, managed to get past Nathan Klein, or Nathaniel Klein rather. He still get past him and a good bit of holder player from Depay. He's quite a strong player and he actually gets fouled here by by uh, Klein. A bit too eager with the tackle. Like I said, Depay is really strong. I'm going to call him Memphis because I don't know how to pronounce his surname. But Memphis with a, a good bit of skill, um, good bit of holder play. And we get a free kick from it here on the edge of the box with Gilfie Sigurdsson. A hard angle to score and it doesn't actually test the keeper. Uh, I thought I'd throw that one there in, in there anyway. But a uh, long ball from Aubameyang Young into Daniel Sturridge. Who's got a chance to operate now? Nathaniel Klein loses the ball, and he's actually fouled Kingsley. He's already on a yellow card from the previous tackle, and he's gonna get sent off. Now, in in game time when I was playing this, I, I didn't have a clue what was going on. But if you go back and watch that, or you watch the replay that's coming up now, he does actually take Kingsley out off the ball. It was like one of them ones that it didn't really seem intentional, but it's a red card nonetheless. As you can see here, he loses the ball and then he goes to block the pass from Curtis Davis and he just comes through the back of Kingsley. Our manager was complaining about it and he rightfully gets a red card. Uh, it, it may have been a bit harsh. I think both bookings were kind of harsh, but they were they were 50 50 ones. But Liverpool actually go on the attack here after going down to 10 men. Coutinho with a good chance. Uh, this, this free kick from Sigurdsson. I decided I'd try a knuckleball technique kind of free kick. And as you see, it actually comes really close. You could see the swerve on the ball. If I put that one on target uh, into this top corner, it could have caused real problems for Karius in, in the Liverpool goal. But uh, Liverpool are the team attacking after going down to 10 men. Not us. It's a good chance here. Giorgino over to Sturridge and a good attempt. Not a good attempt. It was on his right foot. If he came on in his left foot, that could have been problems for us. But luckily for us, he took it on his right. And uh, that's how we're going to go into the half then. 1-0. I'll take it. We were under the cosh all the first half. Didn't get much chances to ourselves. But look at this. Sigurdsson with the ball through to Depay. And look how much space he's in because of the Nathaniel Klein red card. Got all the time in the world. And I've got every faith, every bit of trust in him to finish that one. Like I said, I mean, that is just an unbelievable amount of space. And he comes in, he's got all the time in the world, and it's a good finish past Carriers. Debatably could have done better, but Vaughn throws it out to Barrow here. We get into Leroy Fair, and obviously Memphis is our focal point right now. We want to get the ball to him as much as we can because we know this space. So here's Baston into Sigurdsson, and you can see Memphis just making that run. He gets in behind Joel Matip, and it's a cracking save from Carriers. Makes it 1-1, or keeps it 1-1 rather. Um, we were unlucky not to go 2-1 up there but we go again as Jurgen Klopp would say Leon Britton with a fantastic ball through to Memphis now he's got a lot of time but it, oh, Matip is catching him up good square across to Baston and it's 2-1 we take the lead away at Anfield Liverpool were down to 10 men and you can just see the space that is left behind Jurgen decided not to go with another player at right back he, th he thought he'd just, you know, keep it as it is, try and work it out. But there's so much space for Memphis down the left-hand side. And he pulls it across for Baston's ninth goal of the Premier League season. Um, he's doing all right for us, Baston. I, I like him. 
But Liverpool are coming on the attack now. It's always scary when Liverpool come on the attack because they've got some really good players. Moreno into the ball and Sturridge really should have done better there. Good save from Vorm. It came right at him to be fair. But as you can see here, the nice little feature from here. Uh, Memphis, a handful for defenders. He's got one goal uh, out of the two he scored. Yeah. If you want to pause that and go back, you can. But a really good ball over here to Daniel Sturridge. He takes a good touch. I think it was a straight pass, but we actually fouled someone in the makeup to that. It was Curtis Davis. But Liverpool have a free kick now, and Aubameyang will step over it. He'll actually call Coutinho. We'll take it with his left foot, and that comes really close to going in. I knew it was wide because uh, it was a low height, and it wouldn't have got over the wall. But... Uh, Never mind, we go on the attack, we're trying to make it 3-1 just to kill the game off, Barrow with a decent bit of play, into Baston, into Memphis Depay, who takes one touch, shoots and scores, into the top right hand corner, and that surely seals the deal, Memphis had a storm in this game, they went down to 10 men, he was the player I relied on to make a lot of chances, and he came through, two goals for Memphis, uh, and, a, and an assist from him as well, this one was probably the pick of the bunch. Good play from Barrow into Baston, who play straight across. That was probably meant from Sigurdsson by me, but uh, a good finish nonetheless by Memphis into the top right-hand corner, and he scores his 10th goal in the Premier League this season. He's been a really good signing from us, frozen out to United, so I decided to sign him. I think he was about 22 mil, but uh, more than happy to pay that for him. Aubameyang with the run-through on goal, he was a cracking tackle from Reese Oxford, really showing... Uh, how good he is. He's gone up 7 ratings. I, I don't need to say any more than that. But we're just trying to push forward and get another goal. Add to the stats a little bit. Here's Barrow with a nice bit of no-touch dribbling. Or, or is that that? Yeah, I think I've just messed that up. And uh, into Memphis. Nearly scored his hat-trick. A good save from Carrier. So actually did have a decent game. Despite conceding three goals. You can't be too annoyed at him. Uh, but we're just keeping up the pressure. Fair with a decent attempt. <laughs> that one comes off the post. And uh, that one is how this game is going to end. It's 3-1 to us. Both games, we scored uh, quite a few goals, but did concede one in each game. Thank you for watching. Sorry for my head being all over the place this episode. I've had to calm it here 17 minutes straight. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, and I shall see you next time. Peace.